We have Chris on today. He is a professional runner. Um, yeah, that's, that's they call you slave, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How did, how did you get started out of interest? <clears throat> Weirdly enough, I was doing a, a job uh, all about imbe- investments, uh, and it was pretty depressing. <laughs> so, uh, what, I was, what type of investment? Uh, so, like open-ended investment companies and stuff. So it's like you want to invest in tech, and they'll grab like eight different types of tech companies and spread the investment across, say, the tech companies. But that sounds quite interesting on the face of it. Like, I mean, it probably was if you were doing interesting things and not just talking to clients who were like, "What's the progress on my investment?" And like, <laughs> well, it's been a month. And <laughs> yeah. not much has happened, but yeah, you're not quite a billionaire. Here's yet, a yeah. detailed report. <laughs> There's Wall Street over here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I was doing that, and then uh, randomly I was looking for a different job. Uh, I spoke to a couple of people in the television industry uh, that I sort of had prior, previously known, and um, I found an interview uh, for a runner job on Facebook, of all the things. Uh, and then I applied for that and got that, and that's the win. So I think for clarification, I think when a lot of people just hear you say runner, they may think a jogger uh, or <laughs> someone who actually goes out and runs professionally. Can you uh, explain what you actually do on a day-to-day slightly more, please? Yeah, so uh, production running is basically there's a show going on, uh, be it at a stable, if you're working in sports, which is primarily the area I work in, um, you're <coughs> assisting a production, so you have to do various different tasks on site if you're on a stadium or in a studio behind the cameras, and it's just whatever they need you to do on the day. It can be as simple as getting people lunch and dinner, booking their taxis, you know, teas and coffees, like, it, but anything they ask you to do, and then sometimes they ask you to do things, and you're like, what the fuck's that mean? And then you sprint around <laughs> like a headless chicken and eventually either figure it out or go back and go, oh, you, can you give, give me some more, uh, <laughs> <laughs> some, some more information? Is that, so what's the weirdest <clears throat> lunch request you've ever had to get somebody, or dinner or whatever you've had to get them? Uh, I mean... You're meant to provide like vegan and like special like request meals, right? Mm. And if it's like a celebrity or a talent, mm. <clears throat> they're kind of quite like high order. But like if you're like just a part of the crew, you you kind of really not that important. But <laughs> but I got, you're meant to help them out anyway, right? Yeah. And, and I like help looking after people. Uh, and this one woman's like a gluten free, so I was like, oh, you know, my mum's gluten free. So I was like, I feel bad. Oh, I'll, I'll run out and I'll. I'll leave in though, not supposed to leave. I'll go get you some lunch. Yeah. And I went to go get some lunch and I had to go all the way to Stratford, it's like half an hour away, because the buses weren't running on the Sunday. Got her this sandwich, got it back to her, and she went, Oh, I don't like tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, Oh, okay. Uh, well, I've just wasted all my time then, haven't I? That's all they had. Uh, what, what did you say to that? I just sort of went, Well,. I'm probably not going to eat it because it's gluten free, but uh, it was it was all they had. So then, you know, just I took it away and left it in the room. And then um, the other production staff came in. I was like, "Anyone want a gluten free sandwich?" <laughs> and I didn't mention how I wandered off for a little bit to go get a sandwich. <laughs> well, it certainly doesn't sound like your days. A day to day is anything the same from one day to the next, particularly if you're working on multiple different. Uh, sets or scenes throughout uh, the week. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've worked for ITV, <clears throat> BBC and BT, uh, which are companies I've worked for, all in the sports sort of sphere. Uh, and like I say, they all do stuff differently. And even individual productions from different companies do stuff differently. Um, <clears throat> if you say, for example, I did a lot of rugby tonight, you'll get on the swing of things. Like that becomes very familiar and very samey because it's the same structure. But the minute you're in a different <clears throat> production, it's completely different. Uh, like the BBC do things so, so different. Like everything is is um, sort of, it's weird. With production, nothing goes to plan, right? So you make a plan. And, and I was joking around with a Navy guy who we worked with once, and he's like, it's kind of like the military. You make a plan but it's not going to go to plan 
And the minute shit hits the fan, you have to change plan. Mm. Uh, that sounds like this podcast, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Correct there, Julie. Um, so what would you say are important personality traits for a runner? It must be incredibly frustrating, like that story you just said. You went, you spent all this time getting somebody a specific sandwich or they had a specific requirement and you've carried it out and they're just really ungrateful. Like I personally wouldn't be able to, I think, I'd think they were rude. Like I'd have to, well, I'd just get really annoyed, but you must have dealt with that in a different way. So what personality traits would you say you need? <clears throat> well, um, I think I obviously met a lot of runners as well and you have to, one, be quite creative, quite open-minded, uh, which helps because when you're doing things, it's generally quite exciting. Uh, in regards to dealing with difficult people, you either have to be uh, one of two type of people. You either have to <clears throat> be a person who doesn't give a fuck about anything and there's a lot of runners like that who anything will happen to them and they'll just go, eh, okay. Mm. Uh, or, you know, you just, um, you know, think about it, but then you put it aside and just deal with it. Like, the thing you've, I always think as well, when I have awkward people, it's like, they might be stressed or they've got a, a lot on their plate, right? And it's like, uh, I'm there to help them. And as long as they're not overly rude, like, you can make sort of... Uh, a bit, give them a bit of sort of leave way. So you're you're basically you're you're really understanding, a chilled out person. Don't, you know, you're just really relaxed about. You understand it's a stressful environment, yeah. so you can't be, you can't snap yeah, quickly yeah. at silly things. I mean, I try to be relaxed. Sometimes it's difficult because because there are awkward people. Um, but it's kind of like any career, and that sometimes there's people who are in charge of production, who just probably shouldn't be. Uh, and you just sort of like, luckily I, I've not had to deal with too many of those, but um, there, you know, has been one in the past where I thought, oh Jesus, like, it's not, it's not whenever you turn up, it all goes bad. <laughs> um, well, I think we didn't need to actually boil down into what you actually mean, like, by tra like personality traits. So we've got calm. What, like, can you name some? Like, you're a calm person. Like, you're not hot headed. Yeah, like. yeah. Calm, determined. Um, probably a little bit like. Um, I suppose you have to be quite outgoing as well. Yeah, you, you have to you, talk to people. It's awkward, especially easily um, easy to talk to and talk to people. Yeah, which is hard sometimes, especially when particularly in London. Yeah, I mean, weirdly enough, I find it really easy to talk to the car to the to the cast and crew. But then, like, the talent, I always... If I don't know the person, I have that initial awkward phase of, like, where I'm like, are you OK? Like, like, can I get... Like, when you don't know a celebrity, you never know how they're going to be. Yeah. So that in itself creates an awkward wall. And that you can try and be confident and sort of walk in there and go, hey, you're right... And with some of them, they're like, oh, are you right, mate? And it works. And some of them look at you and go, who the fuck's this prick? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> do, you, do you find it easier when you don't know the celebrity, though? Like, if, like, for me, for example, it'd be like a rugby star. If I was like to walk up and it was like Lawrence Early, I'd be like, uh, 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 hello, mate. Like, are you all right? Like, I'd be so awkward. But if it was like a footballer, I wouldn't care because I don't know any of them are. That's really yeah. a segment in the audience head. <laughs> I mean, um, that's sort of part and parcel of it. It's sort of as much. I I'm not huge, weirdly enough, into the sporting world, uh, so I do have that where I sometimes meet people who I I don't know who they are, and like you say, you treat them more like a person because you don't have this ridiculous sort of built up imagination of what they're actually going to be that doesn't reflect the reality of that the star of the person right because there's the image and then there's the man or the woman mm. so have you worked with many big names right anyone you want to throw out there um so um at the moment i'm doing the premier league so uh there's been a uh, presenter jake humphreys who does formula one oh he's known to be like a really cool guy <laughs> he's really really nice guy he's um he's a funny one because he he stresses anyone in the production team out because he jokes around a lot and goes oh for god's sake look like he makes things out of nothing but it's just like he doesn't mean it 
right. it's uh, a wind up. Yeah. So uh, and then I did. Um, I met. Um, oh, was it Kelsey Gramner Fraser. Oh wow. Yeah, cool. yeah. I met him at the Chelsea Flower Show. Poor guy rocked up with his family, and there were like a hundred production people around him, just like <gasps> swarming at him, like looking like you know. It's, it's bizarre it, because it's like a beehive. It's like you yeah. touch the honey and then they will just appear and <laughs> swarm. Uh, and I, I, I went to say hello, but I didn't go up to him because I felt bad for the guy. So I suppose for anyone who wants to get into the TV career, it's quite an incredible way of seeing the behind the scenes of everything going on. Yeah, it, it changes your opinion on a lot of things because you realise, for one, how much work goes into like a simple show like um, the rugby. Like you watch the rugby and... For whatever reason, it looks quite straightforward, right? But it's a colossal sort of undertaking. So it gives you respect for that. And also, um, television is such an on-the-fly thing that it makes you realise it's kind of crazy in that it's kind of thrown together and people just sort of go, yeah, all right, we'll try that. Oh, oh, oh really? Oh, yeah, oh, it's, it's, like, it's not as structured as what we... Well, there is always a structure. Perceive. But like I said earlier, there's a plan... But I think I've only ever, out of the year I've been doing it, only a, a couple of times has the plan ever gone out without a hitch, without some adjustment, without... Like, uh, I was doing a shift the other day, and we were 10 minutes from live on air, and the script writer was rewriting the scripts, sitting there just changing, changing, changing. <laughs> and everyone was having a mental breakdown. <laughs> oh, God, you wouldn't expect that, would you? When, when no, you watch you shows, no. you just... It looks yeah. completely opposite. Um, and I'm sure that's what people are going to say about this as well, though. <laughs> <laughs> cool, this must be scripted. It's so yeah. well put together. So Absolutely quality not. Um, what would you if so? What would you look for in a runner? If you were if you were doing a production, what would you look for in a runner? If you you know you're a young person or whatever whatever age you are, you want to get into running. What do you look for? Okay, so someone who's determined, for one. Someone who's okay with putting up with shit, because some people will give you shit. Um, it's just kind of the way... It's, it's, it's a problem in any industry, right? Um, in the fact that sometimes people are just a bit dicks. And they exist everywhere, but they do exist in, in running quite a lot. Um, but... On on the whole, yeah, just sort of determined, willing to 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 go above and beyond, and um, you know, uh, not afraid to mess up their body clocks with ridiculously weird hours, which is always cool. So, what are your hours then? Uh it's completely and utterly random because the way it works is it's um you can do running full time, um, but a lot of the time it's like these small companies that so they'll come and they'll hire you on like a a yearly basis and they pay quite a brutal wage and a lot of the time if it's in London they won't pay for transportation it's a lot of case by case basis but the smaller companies get full time runners whereas ITV, BBC uh, BT Sport big companies will just have like a rotor, kind of like a bar how the how a bar works with bar stuff you have a rotor of runners and you get them in whenever they're available so I work whenever I get offered work and I'm always looking for more work, um, but it depends. Great little plug there, Chris. If anyone's listening, <laughs> Chris, uh, we'll, we'll put his details out there. Yeah, that, that's a the big thing of things. Uh, it's also not getting disheartened because there will be months where you potentially could not work. We, there's nothing going on. Uh, I think it's worse in the sporting side of the production industry because um television production anyway because it's more seasonal so it would be really a really difficult job to get into if you're say you know you've moved out you've got a mortgage you've got responsibilities you couldn't you know quit a nine to five job to pursue this uh yeah i mean it depends financially you probably couldn't but if you had some sort of support interestingly enough one of the guys at bt um he started running when he was 34 and now he's like uh, quite high up in the production team. He did running for two years and got, got given a, a full-time job because he was, you know, that good. Um, but a lot of the time with it is it's a slog because it's when opportunities pop up 
um, when you could potentially get a full-time job, right? And you can go out and you can do qualifications that push you in a certain direction. Um, but if you want to go into like the, the production team, then that's just waiting for some sort of opportunity. That sounds quite interesting. So you're saying there's certain qualifications that you could do to emphasise your uh, position. What what sort of things are they, do they involve? So <clears throat> when you get into television, there's lots of different aspects of things. So obviously you have editors, you have graphics um, guys who literally do the graphics. So for example, if you want to be a graphics, you go and do a graphics course. Uh, I don't really want to be a graphics. That's why I haven't done a graphics course because then that forces me to, to, to work with graphics, right? And potentially you can change down the line, but it's almost like once you've committed to a place, it's kind of silly to go back on that progression, if that makes any sense. Um, and if you want to get in with uh, a ca- cameras, the only real way is to be a technical runner and assist a cameraman. And then train you up, right? Work for a company, learn the ropes, learn skills. And it's them training you up and you proving you're a good cameraman for for two. Uh, as a guy I worked with said it took him five years to to, to get full-time work as a cameraman. Um, so anything in production is just, you're either lucky or uh, really hardworking and you, you get in somewhere really good or you have to slog it out for a bit. Uh, it's a lot of, you know, luck of the draw. <clears throat> and the other aspect to it that that they make jokes about a lot of the time is there's a lot of people getting in through family connections. Um, but, you know, that happens in any industry as well. That's that's prevalent in, in the industry I've worked in. My I'm not industry, sure about your yeah. industry. I think it's just, and from my personal point of view, I actually don't have an issue with that because that's how people do get into industries and do get into jobs. It's just who you know. Like, mm. I don't really see an issue with it, per se, um, unless they give the jobs to, like, wasters. But then they get found out and they get sacked. There's only so much your family can do for you to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, um, it is true that you have to work hard, but it, the, the the thing with uh, television is, you know... it it can be a real slog. You can you find yourself... You have to be very um, upbeat as well because you can get quite down um, if things don't seem to be going anywhere. But you just have to realise that's just part of the journey. Do you think that's mainly an impact from the hours you work, the people you're surrounded with? Yeah, I mean, it probably helps. It's, it's a factor of... Um, it's a fun environment to be in, so it's kind of sad when you're not in it. And the way the hours work is it goes from not many hours, which in itself is depressing because you're like, oh, you know, I need money, I need to be working, I need to be doing something. And then it goes to like, oh, okay, so here's this gig. You're going away for an entire week. And then you've got, you know, eight days of full on um, 16 hour shifts where you're like working your ass off. And that in itself is funny because. You go from like bum mode to like no non stop full like um mm. working your ass off. Um so yeah, it's a bit of a yo yo uh, back and forth. What would you say is your influence at work? Obviously it's like a it's a starter role, right? But there's you know, I think Holly Willoughby from I T V started off as a runner and some of the you know, the BBC presenters like I think Jake Humphrey started off a runner, I think if I'm correct. So you know what at, at that level i take it your influence is minimal but is there any or not at all well the thing that's funny with that is your influence is minimal but your impact isn't and i say that because you have to if there's no runner then whenever anything goes wrong in the production there's no one there to like rectify it because they ask you to rectify it a lot of the time uh, and you know that can be any sort of different things but without the runner technically the whole machine could fall apart and that's what people say all the time like the runners you may seem the less important but you're still an important part of the, still that cog in the wheel yeah and if you take it out the machine stops working right no precisely yeah i mean there's always um 
I don't want to call it grunt work, but there's always, you know, there's someone at the bottom and someone at the top, and generally, you know, that it is the ones at the bottom that are putting in the work and and really pushing things through. You know, it's that the hours you get paid are not particularly great. Um, so, for example, it, it depends what you work. To be fair, because there's this thing called commercial running, right? Um, which is music videos, and a lot of people I know do them, but. Um, there's certain rules and regulations with certain of them. Sometimes you have to be over 24 and you have to hold a full driver's license because they'll want you to move a truck or um, something along those lines. Um, but for those shifts, you know, you can get like uh, 250 quid. Like it's it's a, it's a nice bit in your pocket, but it's full on and... You know, you have to be comfortable moving a truck if, if you know, if that's something you're okay with. But personally, I don't want to get in a truck and then, you know, drive through a building and ruin the music video. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, there's that. So, obviously, sp- you've spoken a lot about your uh, your different thoughts and feelings on your career. Um, what would you point out as the biggest negatives? Um, Just the... followed off by your biggest... Positives about yeah, yeah maybe say that you know top three you got three yeah sure so um, <clears throat> negatives wise would be the lack of uh, certainty of work <laughs> which is a, is a big negative um, the other negative is you do have to budget because it's very easy to have a lot of work one month be like oh I'm rolling in the dough and then next month get paid like a hundred pounds and then um, you know, have a little cry to yourself because everything's not going well. Um, and then uh, uh, a potential another negative is just sort of um, uh, if potentially you have to travel all over the place. For me, I see that as a positive because I enjoy traveling. But for a lot of runners, being asked, you know, last minute to go and travel halfway across England is not a particularly appeasing idea. Um, For free positives, you get to meet a lot of interesting people, Uh, you get to see the men and women behind the celebrity, you get to see how the beast of television actually works, and, um, you know, you you do have a lot of free time, which is a blessing and a curse. Mm. I take it, you know... Like you said, you worked in uh, Chelsea Flower Show, you've done the BT Sports stuff. Like, there is lots of opportunity, and your network must have, you know, you must have the opportunity to network with a huge amount of different people. So you never know what's going to come out of that, really, right? It's it's almost like a, a stepping stone to just networking with the entire, you know, uh, TV, commercial, whatever industry it is. Yeah, I mean, it's not <clears throat> what you know, it's who you know, um, which is very true. Um, but also it's very competitive there's a lot of what you've got to realize there's a lot of runners uh, and you have to really really work your ass off because you know these guys will work with runners from all over um, from different places and you want to be the one they pass stuff on to so just sort of on that like networking and finding um different jobs around the country how is it you go about getting involved in a specific job do you go through an agency is there an agency for this so there are agencies but the people tell you a lot of horror stories about agencies Uh, everyone has horror stories about agencies yeah they're just if you can avoid them avoid agencies that put you in placement for work uh, are not good for running Um, because they generally take the piss and mess you around. Like, there's stories about their certain agencies who claim to, you know, be good and whatever, basically not even paying their runners after using them, which is, you know, pretty illegal and pretty bad. (coughs) Don't really know how they get away with that, but (laughs) they do. Um, And so, weirdly enough, where I find most of my jobs comes from the contacts I've already got. Weirdly enough, I do look online online is very hard to find um if you're looking to get in with one of the big companies you have to just keep checking their websites and there will be a bit on there that says about runners if they're recruiting runners 
Uh, and then the other aspect, which is the best aspect, if you're looking to do running, there is a Facebook group page literally called Runners Looking for Work. And people place jobs on there all the time. They can be full-time positions, like as in a junior role. They can be different running stuff all over the uh, the country. So Some of it's really good, but it depends what you're willing to do. Because a lot of it requires you to have a driving license. A lot of it requires you to be of a certain age. So a lot of them say you have to be over 24 for insurance reasons because they'll have you doing certain stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, but so as much as there is a lot on there, it does depend if you fit the requirements and if what, how far you're willing to, to do, right? Because if you're living like in Glasgow and it's in London... You've got to spend a lot of travel, a lot of time to get places. And but then that becomes a sacrifice for you. Like, what are you going to earn out of working? So that, that leads nicely into, you know, our next question. It, can you give us a rough um, estimate for like a year income for being a runner? I know you said it's really hard to do because it varied. But say you're a full-time runner... Um, compare a full-time runner to like a runner like yourself where you get you know odd spits and spots of work right so if i was doing this full-time um let's think about this so roughly if you were getting an ideal amount of work if you if you managed to find full-time employment in this you'd probably get about 500 to 600 quid a week right and that's to say if you could maintain stable work week in, week out. Um, but then could you do that with the hours when you were saying, you know, sometimes you work... Yeah, so, you know, so, so, so I, I'm in a bit of that predicament at the minute in the fact that Christmas is a, is a very busy time period. So I've been offered work from different places for the same dates. So I have to say no to, to one company and accept the other company's work, which is... Very annoying, because obviously you kind of wish they'd be on different dates, so then you could accommodate both. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <clears throat> uh, as much as that's sort of important. And when you were saying about uh, people having to be over the age of 24 for certain reasons, insurance, purpose and that, does that come with a premium on top once you are over that age? I'm not sure. It depends, because it boils down to what the company is prepared to pay you. If there's any extras so for example when i do premier league they pay for my travel um and i am given a 50 uh, 50 pound fee for having to give up a friday to travel and 20 pounds food allowance right on top of my wages and that's amazing but that's just because it's premier league that's only the reason you get that so when I do technical running, so for example, if I go to Arsenal, I have to pay to get up to Arsenal, and that doesn't get covered by anyone. So that comes out of my wages. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah. So it's a complete case-by-case -case basis on what the right. company is willing to do. But if you're doing something big like Europa League, Premier League, they'll probably tra do your travel and probably give you, uh, I think, is it amenities, I think they call it? which is um, when they obviously give you the money for food and stuff. Yeah, like business expenses, basically. Yes. So you also touched on earlier about moving on to other careers, such as you could do a qualification in graphics or um, follow uh, a cameraman round and him train you on how to uh, take that job role up. What other, what, what do you think is the, um, the natural progression for yourself or other runners in their role? Right, so you go into either production when there's an opportunity for you, uh, which can be as simple as just being like an assistant, production assistant. Uh, you can go in as a, a researcher, for example, if you're like saying you're doing rugby tonight, you'll research stories for next year's rugby tonight and information uh, and bits to go along with that. Uh, that that's the production side of things. There is obviously editors, graphics, um, which require you to have prior, you know, qualifications. Or you can go into them without the qualifications if someone gives you the opportunity. So you have to show an interest to someone who can give you that opportunity. 
you can go in as a cataloger who basically, you know, you do basic uh, file transfers and downloads and moving and stuff. They call it logging. Um, and that's something you could go into as well as like an archivist to eventually move around. Uh, the other sort of aspect of things is, like I said, someone training you up to be specific, like a cameraman. Uh, so there's lots of different avenues. Uh, so you have to decide where you want to go and pursue it. But if you want to get into production, it's more applying for things when you see them and hoping there's an opportunity. You've got to show a vested interest as well. If people know you want that, so a lot of the time it's meeting people who employ people at the firms, and it's an awkward one because you don't want to be, hey, hey, I'm talking to you because you give people jobs. You know, you want to build up a relationship without seeming like you're just there to try and get a job. So, you know, the. There's, yeah, that's a hard balance. Yeah. Why well, it must be a hard balance to, to hit. You've got to sound interested about being pushy, right? Yes, massively. Um, but sometimes taking a risk can pay off. Uh, a girl who I did running with, weirdly enough, ended up in um, uh, ended up in uh, a country in Eastern European, Eastern Europe, doing a production uh, <laughs> job. Uh, but like you know, a random one-off just because she heard about it and pestered them and then they were like, oh, for goodness sake, we'll just bring you along. <laughs> That's quite cool. Um, but that doesn't always work. Yeah. You can just be annoying and they'll be like, what are you doing? Like, never hire We'll them never again. give you any work again. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one last question from us. Um, what isn't in the job description? So when you apply for a job, you know, it says you're going to be doing X, Y and Z. What what is one thing that they never tell you that is in the job, but is part of your job? <clears throat> so there's actually quite a lot with running that's <laughs> not in the job description because it boils down to you do whatever production wants you to do, right? Um, so, you know, it's not in the job description to be at a stadium and then you know, someone comes in and, for example, someone wanted The Guardian and there was nowhere nearby. So I had to, you know, go for a 40 minute walk and get this guy a Guardian from like a Tesco's. So, you know, they're, they're, you know, anything they want you to do. And it obviously doesn't say in your job description, you are their servant, go do whatever you want. But that's basically what you are. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, well, Chris, thank you so much, and it's been quite an incredible, uh, quite an incredible experience talking to you. I'd never, to be honest, before this actually knew what a runner was, and that there was so much going on behind the scenes of a production. Um, I just want to say thank you very much, and good luck with your future career. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thanks, mate.